a common thing that you hear in relation to children or siblings is something that I've always felt, which is middle child syndrome. Now, what is a syndrome? A syndrome is a condition. Sometimes it's a medical, a medical condition that uh, uh, could be negative, but a syndrome is just a, a common condition related to psychology, related to mental health, related to sometimes physical, uh, your physical condition, right? And there's one called middle child syndrome which I've always wondered is, is it real or is it just me? Because I've always felt a sense of middle child syndrome. But then I was reading an article recently that suggests it's not so, not so clear that it really exists. So I grew up with two brothers. I had an older brother, have an older brother, two years older than me, and a younger brother, four years younger. Now, what happened was, my older brother felt very responsible. He was like the third parent in a way. My parents put a lot of trust in him to make sure that his younger brother was following the rules, being a good, a good boy, right? So that was me. So he was always very cautious and always making sure, are you doing the right thing? Did you, did you do what, what mom and dad said? right? So I would say he was very um, obedient. And as a result, became kind of a, uh, I don't know how else to say it other than kind of a mother hen. Mother hen is this, a behavior of being protective, right? We might call that a mother hen. Now I, of course, how did I feel about this? That made me more rebellious, made me resentful and uh, wanting to break as many rules as I could. Because he's not a real parent, he's just being a mother hen, and I have to I have to try to subvert his rules as often as possible, which led to some conflicts, of course. Okay, so there's then that, followed by after four years of being the youngest child, and usually the youngest child gets the most attention, my little brother is born four years after me. And suddenly he's so cute and adorable and has blonde fluffy hair and uh, he's the cutest of the three. How, how did that make a, a growing boy feel, do you think? Of course, very jealous, right? Resentful of, of the authority of the older one and now jealous of the younger one because I'm no longer the youngest and the cutest. And so I tortured him constantly, constantly. The thing that people always heard him say was "wook" like that, just how a little little kid would say my name, right? I I did I did I did terrible things. The worst thing on record that I did was when he was maybe two years old, I went to the garden and I found the spiciest pepper I could find. Really, really hot pepper. I think it was a habanero. And I smiled and said, here I have brought you a treat. <laughs> I gave him the pepper. And of course, that, that did not end well. Um, he ate it. He ate a big bite of it as a little two-year-old and then just started screaming and crying and turned as red as a tomato. And I ran away feeling great about myself. But I think later I was, I was punished. So this feeling of being kind of stuck in the middle is called middle child syndrome. And I always thought that's, that's got to be true. That's got to be a real thing because I've, I've heard about it and it definitely... Uh, that definitely resonates with me. Then I was, I was reading an article about middle child syndrome, and it doesn't seem to be so clear. Okay, so here's the article. Birth order and personality, the science behind middle child syndrome. Now, uh, if you know, Adler is a, is a well-known uh, 
uh, Alfred Adler is a well-known uh, psychologist. He was a well-known psychologist. And he talked about this. 1964, Alfred Adler developed a theory on the importance of birth order on personality development. In his theory, he claims that although children may be born into the same household, their birth order greatly influences their psychological development. And that describes how I've always felt. Uh, uh, if if you have a, if you're the middle child, you might be more even tempered, but you might have trouble fitting in due to being sandwiched between the younger and older siblings. That is always exactly how I've felt as the middle child, especially as a as a child, right? And even tempered, uh, generally, I'm quite even tempered as well. The the youngest child is treated like a spoiled baby and can never rise above the older siblings. Absolutely. My parents were much more relaxed with my little brother. They didn't make him follow any rules. They were probably tired of parenting. They just said, do whatever you want. And then the oldest child, more authoritarian and feels all powerful due to the high expectations often set by the parents. A hundred percent. Absolutely. They placed their trust in him to be kind of the third parent. He became a mother hen. And that was a lot of pressure for him, but also something that I always kind of resisted. So this this theory has been around, but is it is it true, right? They, they have these different uh, aspects of personality here. Uh, their personalities are often overshadowed by other siblings in their relationships. They have trouble feeling equal to their siblings or parental relationships. In my case, uh, not inferior, but superior. <laughs> uh, rivalry, rivalry, the middle child often feels need to compete with both younger and older siblings for parental attention. I think that was definitely true as a kid. And the middle children generally feel that they are the favorite child of the family. I didn't so much feel that I was the favorite child. Uh, I was not a black sheep, but just different from, from my, my siblings. How does it affect adults? It is believed that middle child syndrome can have a lasting impact on children as they grow into adults. If the characteristics lift, listed above are true, being a middle child could cause a cascade of negative effects well into adulthood. Cascade means something following on because of some earlier thing. Uh, they may develop they may develop specific traits like they were neglected and may struggle with codependency in adult relationships and they could find themselves continuing to be the peacemaker in adult life. okay The personality might be dulled in comparison to the personality of other adults around them. This I don't feel is true about me. I, f I feel the opposite. I don't feel dependent. I don't feel like a peacemaker. And I don't think that my personality has been dulled in comparison to other adults around me. So that's the opposite. Uh, I don't know if that's true. Now, this article then goes on to say that's a theory that Adler developed and is a common idea. But if you actually study it and do surveys, this is a survey of 15,000 people, right? They studied 15,000 people. Their results, and I, I won't read this whole article, but their results show that it's not so conclusive, that that there are anecdotal, anecdotal means just how someone feels, like me, my, my life experience, and my feeling about being in the middle is anecdotal. It's not based on data. It's not looking at 15,000 people. Uh, uh, it's more anecdotal than true statistically. Middle child syndrome is a popular term used to describe how being a middle child shapes one's personality and outlook in life. Some people believe that middle child syndrome, uh, that middle children are often ignored and neglected, which can have negative effects going into adulthood. While some research suggests that there may be some influence on personality from birth order, the results are contradictory and more research is needed. Ultimately, personality and life outcomes are defined by a variety of social, financial, and familial influences, 
but not necessarily by birth order. So the science is surveys are much less clear than the anecdotal stories about middle child syndrome, it seems. And that doesn't mean it's absolutely not true, but based on the research that has been done, it's very hard to find what's called a correlation. Correlation is a relationship between two things. For example, example a relationship between birth order and personality. According to this, it's not so easy to find a correlation between which order you are among your siblings and your personality, especially later in life. So I think that's interesting. We get these common ideas and it makes me wonder if possibly we shape our, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. We shape our personalities or how we think about our personalities based on what we hear about, like theories of middle child syndrome, making me think, well, maybe I have that. And then because I think I have that, or I think I experience that, I then tell the stories of my childhood memories to fit that because I think I am that. So I wonder. It's interesting. Um, and I think also sometimes statistics and surveys can't quite get at the on the ground truth of someone's real lived experience. So I'm not really sure where to go with that. It's kind of inconclusive, but I still find it interesting. And when I think about my childhood, I really do think that I had that classical middle child syndrome. Mm -hmm.